Welcome to Split Ends and Friends Podcast. This podcast isn't just about hair, makeup, fashion, and how to be successful in this industry. We will talk about all that, but it's much more. It's about how hairstyles are changing the world. We're bringing communities together and making a difference. We're spreading kindness around like confetti. Hosted by Trisha Rivas, owner of Trixie's Salon and founder of the nonprofit Dreamcatchers Foundation Inc., and co hosted by Hannah Arendt, social media guru, hairstylist at Trixie's, and director of education. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Split Ends and Friends. We are here today with Kendra. And Ms. Kendra is uh, president of Triangle Financial Services and president of NABO. And we wanted to bring her on here today to talk about a few different things um, from the services that she offers, um, how she's helping us at Trixie's, and also um, a little bit about NABO and how wonderful it is. Both Trisha and Kendra are part of NABO, and that's actually how they met. Right, ladies? Yeah, absolutely. Your yes, senses of yes, humors yes. Um, go well together, so I'm, I can just imagine. And You're... before we start, I would just like to say that Kendra is a horrible driver. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't given her digs. If you want to go fast, go with Trisha. Exactly. Holy cow. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Throwing that out right away. <laughs> oh, goodness. I love this woman. I want to give her such a hard time. Such a hard time. So, yes, Miss Kendra, um, tell us a little bit about yourself because you do such phenomenal things, not only in your business, but in the community. Wow. That's not a heavy question to begin with. <laughs> Well, I'm going to start with big picture and what I think makes me me, which is this um, overriding belief that we show up in the world like we want it to be. So my personal mantra is be the change you want to see in the world, right? That's not mine, (laughs) right? But I did put a Kendraism on it or shut up. (laughs) Yes. So to me... Whatever I do and what I do, I put my heart and soul into and um, really want to show up the way that I want to see the world because I feel like when we focus on that, we get the best of ourselves and the best of everyone that is out there and really get to see um, all of that the world has to offer. So when we talk about How I operate my business, it's from that same collaborative space. Um, From how I lead National Association of Women Business Owners, it's the same. And from my absolute passion around um, wealth building, is what I would say, and being a steward for our own wealth in our life, um, that's where that place comes from. Um, We can really dive deep. Because to me, uh, when we talk, what I do is I own a financial advising firm. We just happen to be a boutique financial advising firm with three financial women financial advisors and um, in the process of hiring more support staff and growing with that same philosophy because money is a vulnerable place. And um, our decision-making process is not just a rational one that lives in concrete numbers and analysis. Don't get me wrong. I love numbers and analysis. <laughs> they make my life a lot easier in making decisions. But there's this other component. There's both components, which is the emotional side. And that's what we were going to talk about today and we were discussing yes. earlier. Yes. Yeah. Is that we are in variably emotional creatures. And I really dislike this idea that when we deal with our money, or we make decisions that we need to take the emotion out of it. Mm -hmm. Like that is some super mistaken belief. Now, that doesn't mean that I think we should make purely emotional um, decisions, 
But there's this wonderful balance of yeah. being able to use our rational side of our brains and our emotional sides to get the absolute best decisions that we're going to be able to make in our lives. Um, it's something that I've had to find out along the way and practice on my own, but it's also something that I love being a steward for. And that's really one of my major roles as a financial advisor is to help people make better decisions in their life that bring them more joy and closer to what really matters to them. So it's been just, it's just an honor to show up and be the change that I want to see in the world. It's really about serving and living our purpose that we're being able to fulfill that. So with a lot of fun along the way too. <laughs> now you didn't go to school for this though. And I think people would probably be very surprised on what you did go to school for. Oh, it was okay. an interesting journey yeah. for sure. Um, I started off at Iowa State in chemical engineering. Um, I chose Iowa State late in the game. I originally grew up in Iowa City. Uh, so I was all locked and loaded to go to the University of Iowa. And then Iowa State came back with me for full paid tuition scholarship based yeah. on academics. And I said, sight unseen. I said, give it to me. I'm going. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So I've always followed the dollars, right? Yeah. And let the rest fall into place. And in that journey, I love chemistry and math. And the whole um, problem solving around that in engineering, where you don't just look at it from one way, you look at it from a whole bunch of different ways and what analysis you need. Um, but I couldn't see myself as a chemical engineer. So there was something always driving me. I like to say I was in search of my purpose, but let's just be honest. I wanted to be making an impact in people's lives. And most chemical engineers work in large manufacturing plants, monitoring chemical processes. And when I discovered that, I loved the learning, but not necessarily the career path and didn't have any really at the time in my life, didn't think of anything else that I could do with that degree. So then I just started exploring different degree, degrees. And I actually went to not just four different degrees in that four years that I was there, but four different colleges. Oh, wow. So I went between the College of Engineering to the College of Design to College of Family Consumer Sciences and the College of Business. Um, really motivated to get out of there in four years because that's when my scholarship ended. Yeah. But the whole time exploring what my true passion is. So it has been a journey um, and even then, I graduated with a degree in management and started working um, out of the gates. I was working for Airmark at Principal Financial Group. And um, then the contract was ended, and I found myself in the position of being offered a job to stay on or an offer to take severance. And I chose severance because what I was doing wasn't fueling me. And that's when I did a whole bunch of soul searching. And I pretty much did my own self-guided career hunt. I came to find out in networking groups afterwards that there's people that you pay to do what I did. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what? I didn't even know this was a profession. Um, I did personality exams. I took a look at my skills and strengths. What did I actually want to have happen? I looked on um, job posting websites to see what was available, what was there. I knew I loved analysis. Uh, my experience in business was all on taking those numbers and being able to translate them um, into tangible actions in business. So I was really comparing financial analysts versus financial planners because of the numbers and analysis thing. And I thought, wow, the planning portion has a bigger impact on people's lives. I wonder what they do. And I opened up the phone book and I started cold calling financial planners. I literally just picked them up and said, would you talk to me about what you do? Because I'm tired of chasing careers and yeah. to find out that they're not the right fit. I want to make a commitment to a career path that um, really is a good fit. And from that, I had a half a dozen different interviews to join firms. And that's how I found my wow. independent firm, um, uh, Triangle Financial Services. Um, Tan Stam was the owner of it. Um, and what appealed to me out of all the opportunities was when he said to me, he's like, yeah, you can make a lot of money in this business, which that's what the sales pitch for all the other places were, by yeah. the way, yeah. is you could just 
play golf and make money and, Mm -hmm. you know, do these things and make money. And I'm like, really? But I want to make a difference in people's lives. So when Tan said, well, yes, you can make a lot of money. That's not what brings me the most joy. He goes, what makes, brings me the most joy is helping people realize their goals and getting them where they want to be. And that was my big light bulb. That was when I knew it was the right fit. That and being my own owner and in the independent channel where you don't have a large corporation or somebody telling you this is how you need to go out and do this because we're out here making as much money as possible. Not that money is a bad thing, which we'll talk about. We can step into our abundance and embrace it. But for me, that's not always my number one priority. I am mindful of money, but my number one priority is making a difference in people's lives. So um, that's why I chose Triangle Financial, and that's a little bit about the journey on how I got here. When you called some of the financial, other financial planners, did you have anybody tell you that, no, they wouldn't give you advice or meet with you? Or? Not a single one. I love that. Doors opened every yeah. single time. And oh, if you think that was an easy call, it was not. Oh my you know, no. I sat there, my yeah. palms are shaking, my sweating, <laughs> dry mouth, and I'm like, I'm okay. I'm just asking them to talk to me, but I've never done that before. Yeah. And um, and from there, yeah, it was pretty incredible. And I really had the questions on what do you do on a day-to-day basis? What does that really look like? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I knew big picture what I wanted to be accomplishing, but I wanted to see if it was going to be a right fit um, for me. So it was, yeah. And every single place is a little, a little bit different or a lot different, just depending on what kind of organization. So I saw the whole spectrum in the industry yes. from independent to large wire houses to mm-hmm. the Edward Jones. Yeah. I looked at them all just from a gather information perspective. Sure. Mm-hmm. What I love from, uh, about Triangle and with you, though, is that you have systems. You're not, and your clients are a part of those systems in that process. So from point A to point B to point C, this is how we're going to get there. And um, simple systems is what I say, you know, kind of like the, the back of a napkin um, on your expenses. I mean, because truly, that's what it is at the end of the day. What's going in and what's going out? And right. what do I have left right. at the end of the, you know, the end of the day? If, and if it was really only that simple, it's like losing weight. Okay, you want to lose weight? Quit eating so much. Right. It really yeah. is that right. simple. Right. <laughs> so, right. that way. <laughs> I would agree. So it might be simple, but it isn't necessarily easy. Exactly. And so the, the engineer in me um, loves to design systems and processes. Yes. But I would say, and this is, this is my translation of that, it's called elegant simplicity. So we go from simple, which is just this number and that number, to this big, huge, complex, oh, wait, but what about this? What about that? This intricacy, that number, well, that's not really how cash flow goes. This popped up. I didn't know that expense. I hadn't planned on this. You know the stories. You've mm-hmm. told them yourself, and I have too, to what is the output after you go through our process, which is elegant simplicity. So it is an elegantly designed solution that is simple. And I would hope my whole role is to make it easier, right? Um, It really is about making it easier. But that that is taken in account all of those complexities. And now you're at this place of it's simple, but customized designed for what you need. So that's elegant simplicity, right? I'm sure it's kind of like cutting hair. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I think too, you know, in talking it's about money and, and people's financial situations can be very vulnerable and mm-hmm. sometimes embarrassing. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, even as myself as an owner, and I've shared, you know, m- numbers to my mentors or, um, you know, people that I would like to design Trixies after. Um, and that is very, very vulnerable. And again, can be very embarrassing because as the owner, as the leader, you don't want to others to think that you don't know it all or do mm-hmm. it, but you have to be in that place of honesty or you're never going to fix anything. So that's where being a steward of that and creating exactly. that safe place for people 
to be able to let down their guard and be vulnerable. I would agree Mm -hmm. entirely. And, you know, so much of my industry is black, right, white. This is right. This is wrong. Yes. And just like in losing weight, right? Oh, I'm not where I want to be. Yeah. Um, Or I know that these behaviors are not working for me. Well, that's why you're coming and talking to me. It's because... I'm going to help you through that process. Mm-hmm. And I am a firm believer in creating that solution with the client. Like you said, all my processes are client centered and we're very yes. client focused because um, the way that I would do it in my life or here's, you know, X, Y, Z told me that I should do it this way. Mm-hmm. But you already know that. You already read that blog post. You've already listened to that podcast <laughs> and you're still not doing it. Yes. So let's get to the reason why, right? Let's figure that out and let's make that um, happen for you. So that's where um, being able to create that space where we can show up and be collaborative um, really is important. And I myself am not perfect with money. And I have uh, family members that aren't perfect with money. And Mm -hmm. my journey with money um, really brought me to the place where I am today um, and around the passion that I have because I watched people struggle and not reach out for resources and not do those things. And I was personally impacted by those struggles. So I've chosen to show up in a way that can be beneficial for people um, across the board. And to me, it is the key to our prosperity as a nation And our prosperity as a community is when we can interface and embrace our wealth and be good stewards for our money because it has profound impacts on our safety and security, right? So when we're not overly leveraged in debt and we have enough money to take care of what we need, then we can operate from a place of creation and abundance much Mm -hmm. better than survival. And when we can all get to those places in our lives, we as a community are all better too. So there's some key, very simple steps to building wealth, but it isn't easy. And so that's digging into the complexities of it and finding your own personal elegant solution to that. And that's where it's every single one, every single person is different. Well, let's be honest, when you are in a financial healthy place, it's less stressful. Yes. (laughs) That's what I'm saying. I mean, you know, it just is. There's not as much anxiety. There's less there's less stress. Um, I mean, you know, all of that good stuff. I'm looking forward to you coming in and talking to Trixie's um, uh, staff on uh, financial wealth and how to um, to get that to that place of um, abundance. And that looks different for everybody. It does. That looks different for everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, and I and I love that you're mindful of that also. Well, when we talk about retirement right Mm -hmm. some most people say hey i want to retire i don't want to be working until the day i die most people yeah when we say that what does retirement really look like i've Mm -hmm. asked many 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 different classes hundreds of people and resoundingly it is to summarize it we get to do what we want to do when we want to do it without worrying for money yes and then i always go well what does rich look like or being wealthy look Mm -hmm. like oh does it look like doing what you want to do when you want to do it without worrying about money yeah so to me that's why i'm a wealth steward is that it does unfold retirement but it's more than that because it is about stepping outside of that um survival mode and that anxiety and being able to find your way to that place Mm -hmm. and there are seriously you know you've heard the podcast you know what you should be doing like uh spending less than what you make right (laughs) just like eating less than what you expend spend less than what you make right super super simple but there's so many different ways to approach that to fetter it out and i would say um one big component that we don't talk about enough is that we'd all say we want to be there, right? Mm -hmm. We all say we want to be there, but depending on what we, our mindset and our past experiences, maybe we don't even know what it looks like and feels like to have enough money Mm -hmm. because we've always been in survival mode. Hi, this is me coming from 
from a recovering perfectionist and from a scarcity mindset is that when we've always been in survival mode, there's never enough. And that is a habit that overrides us that if we can't start visualizing what it looks like to have more than enough and to start to feel what it feels like to have be supported by our money, like being supported by our money and knowing that it's there for us. It's like a relationship. It's just like relationships with food or people. You'll just find yourself in that spinning wheel of recreating it, even though you keep trying to do different, do it differently. So to me, it's not just, just the behaviors. It's not just tracking numbers. It's not just addressing the emotions, but it's also stepping into this place of what does it really look and feel like of visualizing being in that abundance. I've had to do that with my money. Uh, I've had excellent habits, but it was all from scarcity of not having enough of it. That's why I hoarded it to this place of trying to do the same habits from abundance. And now I'm translating all of that paradigm into me and time. So that's um, a whole other ball of wax. But I feel like when we do change our habits and we do start creating it in our lives, then it feeds on itself and having a community, having more than just yourself on an island trying to figure it all out by yourself is so critically important to being able to get there. So whatever that looks like. Oh, yes. Well, I would, I would just like to say, I love that it's women at your, I mean, nothing against men, but and we don't have anything as against a, men either. <laughs> but as a woman, I mean, it's intimidating to go into an office that's all men and yeah. in suits. And I, it's not my, I mean, my, my hairstylist, I, that's not my world at all. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's awesome. And I, I mean, just the fact that you understand like the emotional part of it is just huge. I think as hairstylists, I mean, I know a lot of hairstylists listen to this podcast, so I just think the connection to of how we're kind of connecting what you do to a hairstylist and our collective like weaknesses as as creative people <laughs> with money is great. I think it's you know well, there's a lot we can learn when she's going to come in and speak with our staff, and we're very excited about that. It'd be fun to see to have hairstylists for a month just break down how much they spend on coffee. Yeah, well, even just, yes. well, even just like you said, the mindset of always thinking you don't have any money, but then if you really looked at it, it's like, well, you really do. It's, I think that's huge with us, and we talked about that. It's the mm-hmm. habits, yeah. just like you said. But that's all of us. I mean, everybody. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, humans. Oh. yeah. Whatever we do repetitely, we are yeah. right. Yeah. And so, yeah, if we keep saying we don't have enough, we don't have enough, we don't have enough, you'll find yourself in places where you just don't have enough. Yeah. yeah. And so we intentionally with my children, we rewrite that is I choose this over this, right? What am I choosing in this moment when I make that choice? Mm-hmm. Um, that, and I think we were talking about having the self-awareness is being a hairstylist or a creative where maybe your natural bent isn't to manage your money, um, to be mindful of it, right? And actually that whole thing gives you heebie-jeebies. You'd rather just ignore it and say that you just don't have enough for it until you go and buy your cigarettes and coffee. Um, <laughs> or close. Or close. Is that, that's the first step in self-awareness. Yeah. But to me, the elegant simplicity, the best design is actually digging into those complexities and then creating automated systems or solutions in your own personal life that helps you identify what are those big goals that you really want to have happen and how can I automate that without thinking about it so that I can still continue living my life with the same habits um, that I have, maybe with a little less money or a little bit more mindfulness. There might be a little bit of a shift in it. But let's not try to try to be somebody that we're not, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So to me, that's what the financial paradigm is. And unfortunately, um, or fortunately, there are certain habits that we as wealth managers know create wealth. Yeah. That can come from a great place of creation or abundance. And it can also come from a very scary place of yeah. scarcity. Like I'm yeah. so afraid to spend money that I'm not going to. And that's equally as unhealthy. Yes. Even yes. though those habits are, are designed to have a whole bunch of wealth, mm-hmm. then how is your money really supporting you? And what is your purpose? And, and how is that driving whatever is important to you in life? So that being said, that if you're not that person that's super got those habits because you live in fear or from abundance and you 
don't have what you think, or maybe there's some things that are working, but there's things that can be improved. Mm -hmm. It's about finding that way that you can do it so that it's automated, that you know it works for you, and you don't have to continually attend to it. So the idea of budgeting, which I hate that word, by the way, because it's so constrictive. Mm -hmm. It means you lack and there's not enough and you're going to budget and you can only spend $20 a week on your coffee and cigarettes, right? Mm -hmm. Um, That budgeting process and then reconciling and making sure you're within budget every single month or week or whatever it is, it doesn't, as an effectiveness of being mindful of it, maybe tracking those expenses would be decent. But the reality is that's, if that's not how you've always lived, that's unrealistic for you to continue living your life that way. And if that's your paradigm on what managing your money looks like is good, is having a budget and reconciling your budget, then you're never going to be good at money because that's what in your mind, good at money people do. I would challenge that, right? That being good at money is just making sure that those things that are most important to you are funded as a top priority and that it trickles down to those things that maybe are like a coffee that you could maybe do two a week instead of 16, right? But those aren't as big of a priority in your life that those are lower on the list. It's not that you eliminate them all. It's just making choices, designing it so it's supportive in that way, and then starting to visualize what does that possibly look like Mm -hmm. to be good at money without being a bean counter, Yeah, right? Well, it reminds me of an article I read recently. I don't know where it was, but it was like, stop telling people to never go get coffee. Let yourself get a coffee every once in a while because it makes you happy. Yes. Just prioritize what you're spending your money on. Yes. And I loved that. And that's so funny because I just read that like. Absolutely. And yet, where is that point? I also have other people who said, yeah, I really need to cut back on my coffee habit. And surprisingly, I just started brewing coffee at home. It doesn't mean that I don't go out occasionally for yes, it, yes. but I've just cut back and I don't miss it. Yep. Yeah, you're actually really happy to have coffee at home and yep. not have to go get it. Right. So <laughs> yeah. it still can, yes. there's some sort of beautiful balance yeah. where it is full of grace and really accommodating. Yeah, there is no no coffee line, right? Yeah. Or, ooh, I have to find, you know, be so rigid in, in our <laughs> yes. design. Yes. It's determining what, uh, well, just quite frankly, reshaping that narrative on what what being good with money is and then creating that in your own life and what it is, right? And that being said, somebody that's making three or four times of what you are making might be able to and enjoy spending yeah. that money on mm-hmm. those coffees or maybe they have an at-home espresso machine and latte. Yeah. So there's some of those realities that exist yeah. Yeah. Um, which we can get into what money really is and that whole comparison value kind of situation but that's a whole other conversation. So, Where can, where can people reach you to um, uh, have some guidance on financial <laughs> financial wealth. You know, do you what's your website, a telephone number, um, and even too, what is I guess is it a consultation? Do they come in for a consultation? What does a first meeting with you look like? Right. You know, what can they expect? Absolutely. And most of my most people find me by going to my website, yeah. which is trianglefsinc.com, um, and they will research me, understand a little bit about what our process looks like, and reach us via the website for our contact page. You can also check us out on Facebook. Um, We also have a Books and Balcony Club where we read financial books and really just sit around and talk about them Um, and drink wine and talk about life, right? Yes. Um, But what that looks like is, yes, there's a 30-minute initial consultation that's free of charge just to see what services align. We offer a wide array of um, services. So it can be as simple as uh, a fee for service where you just need a quick start plan or you need an hour's worth of coaching, financial wealth coaching, where you're gonna pay me to do some analysis and get you on your on your way to um, full financial plans uh, where we bill usually hourly based on an estimate. And then we get into wealth management. So if you have assets, which is the traditional paradigm of our industry on how you get paid, Mm -hmm. but we still maintain that. If you were to have us manage assets, we have a couple different, we have the low cost version, which is part of the unbundled services. And then we have the complete wealth management, which is really 
all about um, getting a percentage of your assets under management and getting all that financial advice and investment advice and wealth management included in a one percentage point yes. fee on your assets. And that just depends on the amount of assets you have. It's a sliding scale. So we have intentionally designed our service offering and products to meet our clients' needs as to where they're at and get them building wealth. Because once again, and this is something that was very affirmed when I was out in New York with a cohort of uh, other top financial advisors in the nation, and we were talking about the future of our business and the impact we have in our communities is that if we can get more people building their own personal wealth and being stewards for the wealth and getting them in a healthy relationship with money the better off we all are and that's so that's why i've designed my services as such is so that uh, we can all get there wherever we're we're at that's still evolving i have a lot of other ideas on ways to be able to deliver that in a um in our lens, with our lens um, being that steward and guide to money. So, but those are solid in the works. So more to come. Always. Well, I do have to say, I don't know any other financial planner that um, makes uh, that look as sexy as you. <laughs> <laughs> That's, so kudos. <laughs> That's why they love to come to me. It is. But not only that part too, but... Um, you so you do so show so much grace, Kendra, and not only in that, but you know in Navo, I think I shared one time on a Facebook page, um, you would come to breaking breaking boundaries um, with use DSM, and one of the things that you talked about was showing grace, and it, it instantly I think you know I had mentioned that I'm like you know, we don't do enough of that, and you are the epitome of showing grace, and you know you've shared with me too because of your own personal situations. Um, you know, as to why uh, you definitely are a steward of showing the, of showing the grace so much. So, well, thank you for yes. acknowledging that. It's yes. yeah, it's just really about about right being the change we want to see. Yeah. So that's yes. how I would love to see the world full of, and so I will do my best to show up as it. I don't always, <laughs> and it hasn't always been a habit, yeah. but it's one that I've chosen to focus on for sure. So. Yeah. Um, I do want to talk just a couple minutes about Nabo, but if you could recommend a financial book, what would be one that you would recommend? Oh, so one of the ones that I think is applicable to so many people, regardless of where they're at in the journey, and also is just absolutely hilarious, yeah. is You're a Badass at Making Money yep, by sure. Jen Sincero. Oh, sure. And it happens to be in the triangle green for the cover, yeah. cover oh, yeah. too. Yeah. So that might also be my draw to it. But for the general public, wherever you're at in your yeah. journey with money, that one is so hilarious. Mm-hmm. And really relevant there's lessons that i even took away from it even learning it you know even being in my business Mm -hmm. so i feel like it speaks to somebody that's just getting started on their journey to those that are in mastery so what i loved about that book i also like profit first (sighs) um which i have that one but what i love about jen is that the attitude towards money it is is how you go about it like you said if you're constantly in that place of scarcity that's what you're going to have. Yeah. But if you have a mindfulness of abundance, that is what you're also going to have, um, you know, also. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's all about attitude mm-hmm. and that energy that you're putting out there. Mm-hmm. And being able to connect uh, what I think what really happens in our brain in terms of neurons and our brain chemistry mm-hmm. is we start connecting into what we really want to create and where we yes. want to be faster yes. and quicker than yes. um that whole scarcity sign mm-hmm. so it makes it easier when we have those pathways created or practice those pathways to be able to make decisions based on those pathways when we've always been in survivalship or not not having enough like yeah. that's one of the i mean we all have said it before you know hey would you like to go do this i don't have enough money for that mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and it was one that was repeated to me constantly as a yeah. child right yeah no i'd love to buy that for you but we don't have enough money yeah. right i know yeah and oh, that's yeah. what manifests <laughs> yeah. in your life regardless yeah. of and i've seen people with yeah. six figure income that don't have enough money yeah because that that attitude that lens that 
that you can easily manifest in your life because yes. it's so easy to spend it and then poof you don't have enough of mm-hmm. it so um where where you were just saying that yeah just take a look at no i really do have money what it is there yeah. so what do i need to do and i don't think that i think jen sincero definitely t- t- touches on it yes. very 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 well i do too um but um I don't feel like in practice in my industry that's something we work very hard on mm-hmm. um, or isn't necessarily addressed. Yeah. But that's what really fires me up yeah. is really let's talk about what abundance looks like. What's retirement mm-hmm. look like? Yes. That's usually the starting point, right? Yes. What's retirement look yes. like? What are you doing in retirement? Yeah. What's that feel like? What's that whole image? And then let's figure out a way to be able to get there. And when we can use that as our pull and that as the way we're going, it's really fun and exciting. It's always fun and exciting. My um, view of retirement is traveling the world in my camper with a little pool behind salon. And I'm doing little makeovers at the campground. Um, you know, perms, cuts, um, you know, maybe, maybe um, you just Mary Kay consultant. You just want to be <laughs> still Magnolia's but in camper form. <laughs> And you want to be Dolly. You're going to have to take up a oh, smoking habit. Oh, my gosh. At the camper. Yes, I can see just a pink camper with Dolly's face on the side of it with Trixie's underneath. Yes. Yes, Trixie's, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I love it. Well, I think you're already creating that, right? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah. so yeah. that's what's so fun is mm-hmm. when we're starting to visualize where we want to be, then yeah. we start taking steps every day to be able to get there and we find pathways to do it. It's amazing. Yeah what your brain is able to do when you feed it the right stuff, right? And you feed it those things and then poof, it'll start really doing the work for you and answering those questions. But when it's like, I don't have enough, I don't have enough, I don't know, how am I gonna get enough? No, then that's, then the the answers you're getting aren't the good answers on, how can I really get here, right? How can we make this happen? Mm -hmm. It gets to be a lot easier and a lot more fun too. And then tracking the numbers, we can't neglect all of those. To me, it's a masculine energy, yeah. but all the numbers of the tracking and all that yeah. stuff. That is so fun too, because year over year, I just uh, just talked to a client who started with me six years ago and they had a negative net worth and their net worth is up to $160,000, right? In like a six year period of time, <laughs> they, their net worth exploded. Yeah. But it's because they did those steps, tapped into that vision and started accumulating wealth and paying down debt. And it was just this, it's, that's the fun stuff is that starts giving you confidence and really says, Mm -hmm. wow, it is possible. It is not just this pie in the sky thing that I'm dreaming about. These are really possible. And that's where the numbers come into play because they can help support you on that journey. Yeah. Well, we'll have to have you come back on to talk about Nabo because yeah, we'll, we ran out of uh, ran out of time, and we which is it much for those of time. you that don't know what that is. It's yeah. the National Association of Women Business Owners. Um, it's really a fantastic sisterhood yes. to be able to to propel entrepreneurs, women entrepreneurs specifically, into um, political, economic, and uh, uh, social spheres of success. So, and power. So they did throw this power and, yes, yes, and yeah. success in there, which is yeah. really the interesting. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> but really it's about uplifting and elevating yeah. each other. And I think I'd be happy to come back and talk about, about that and what that can do for um, any one of the members that are involved, or if it's something that you're passionate about, you can support members of NABO yes, by yes. doing business with them, right? Yeah, exactly. Yes. Right? Just like, you know, I, I forgot to tell you I need a bottle of shampoo and some dry shampoo, yes. and yeah. could you deliver that to my door? <laughs> Most definitely. Most definitely. <laughs> great. You know, um, you got my it. order. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And that's a great thing. And we do have such phenomenal um, things happening and uh, here in Iowa with Novo, Iowa, and nationally. But um, it definitely is a, it is a sisterhood, a very fun sisterhood. Oh, my yeah. My dad. Yeah. <laughs> Would we have it any other way? No. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. exactly. <gasps> well, thank you so much, Kendra, for coming on. And Thanks for having me. Anna, do you have any...
final words of wisdom that you'd like to say on this Wednesday? I don't think so. What did you say was your thing? Be the change you want to see in the world or shut up? Yeah. So just take that into the day. I might put expletives <laughs> in front she of would. shut the yeah, she would. bleep up, yeah, but you know, you can just put in whatever works for you. Yeah. When, we whatever post works your, for when we post today about having you on, we won't put the um, this was it, but we'll, you know, definitely put your motto. Yeah. Because I do love that. I love that. And you definitely show that. Mm-hmm. You do. So, yeah. I adore you. Thanks. Absolutely Same to you. you. Not right your driving, you. but I adore you. No. <laughs> Right back at you. Yeah. <laughs> she's always so critical of people's driving, but she's just as wild. Right? And I knew I needed a little bit of support on this one. We oh my gosh, her. I was like, I can't look at the speedometer, not looking at the speedometer. We her, she gets us places fast. So. Very fast. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. All right. We hope you have a phenomenal day, everyone. Enjoy this gorgeous weather, and we will talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening, and thank you for having me on. Thank you.